Boxing Day at 2.15 on Thames. If the cat gets the turkey and the dog leaves home, Dad loses his car keys, who do you phone? Christmas line, 071 484 8484. This Christmas Eve on Thames, the boys in blue still have an important job to do. This isn't an arrest factory, sir. Get up! This is London. The streets are paved with crime. Well, I hope he hasn't nicked it as a getaway car. His mates will be well disappointed. You tell your lads to get their fingers out. George, but I think the idea is that we make the arrest, not get done for reckless. A special hour-long episode of The Bill tonight at 7.30. In 15 minutes, today's Thames News. First, the world news from ITN at 5.40. <laughs> Gorbachev resignation announcement on Christmas Day. Georgian rebels give their president ultimatum. Flowers for father of six killed in hit and run. And shops count the cost of a not so merry Christmas. Good evening. Mikhail Gorbachev will tomorrow formally announce his resignation as the president of the Soviet Union. He'll address the people of the former Soviet republics on television. He spent today saying goodbye to his staff at the Kremlin. Here, the Prime Minister John Major repeated his invitation to the Russian President Boris Yeltsin to visit Britain. News of Mikhail Gorbachev's Christmas Day resignation came as he gathered his staff in the Kremlin to say goodbye. The President, last seen in a weekend interview, will make the formal announcement on TV tomorrow evening. Members of his old legislature gathered to wind up their business. The Supreme Soviet was one of the key organs of central power in the USSR. Now it's just another impotent symbol of a bygone era. But old habits die hard. MPs who'd assembled to discuss formally disbanding the Soviet Union did what they've done so often in the past. They postponed their decision to another day. There was little sympathy for Mr. Gorbachev among hard-pressed shoppers bearing the brunt of his economic failures. He wasn't any good, said this woman. I lived better under communism. Snapped another, he's ruined the country and deceived us. He should be put on trial. For some time, people will remain, remember, under whose leadership they got into such economic mess. But then they will start to forget it, or will find other vill villains who did it. And I think uh, some good things will remain about him in the memory of people. This is the reality for now, Christmas shopping Moscow style. Russia plans sharp price increases next month, and few doubt that in the post-Gorbachev era, life will get worse before it gets better. Tim Yu at ITN, Moscow. Mikhail Gorbachev will be remembered as the man who brought the Cold War to an end, but he was never able to deliver what the Soviet people wanted most, prosperity. Our diplomatic correspondent Geoffrey Archer looks back at his career. When Mikhail Gorbachev returned to Moscow three days after the August coup leaders had pronounced him politically dead, it was an unprecedented resurrection, but he was a much diminished force. The speed of his downfall caught the outside world by surprise. Only a month before he recorded this secret appeal in captivity, he was in London, fated by foreign crowds as he had so often been before. For their leaders, he was still a pivotal figure. His survival, it then seemed, the one sign of stability in a nation he'd done so much to change. The magnitude of the change is undeniable. First, Soviet troops left Afghanistan. That led to the end of superpower meddling in regional conflicts across the world. Then nuclear weapons were not just controlled, but actually reduced through treaties with the United States. And Eastern Europe was liberated. Moscow hardliners charged that the Soviet Union's security interests were being shamelessly abandoned. That his personal style eased the process of change is beyond dispute. No previous Soviet leader would have joined in the singing at a White House party. But he was also a leader made by the old system, a product of Soviet communism. He'd been born in a Soviet Union ruled by Stalin, 
As a young man, he worked his way up through the party's youth wing, and he did what all ambitious men of his generation did, used the party to advance his career. His initial reluctance to condemn the Communist Party's role in the coup did him immense damage. He failed to understand that giving the people democracy meant giving them absolute power, the power to vote for independent republics, the power to reject him. He presided over the winding up of Lenin's revolution and that has been achieved remarkably peacefully. But what's been revealed now that the communist stone has been lifted gives cause for fear as well as hope. The flowering of nationalism has led to the birth of new nation states from the old republics, but it's also ignited old tribal conflicts. It's already led to violence in Azerbaijan, in Georgia and in Moldova. There are ethnic disputes across the old union that could erupt without a central force to control them. The efforts to transform the command economy have been tentative at best and no sign yet that what has been done can fill the shelves. The underlying problems of the economy, its hopelessly inefficient distribution system among them, have not been tackled. And the vast military machine created by the Soviet Empire has now lost its reason for being while retaining its destructive power. Red Army troops returning from the former vassal states of Eastern Europe find their paychecks in doubt and their leadership uncertain. The process of dismantling the nuclear arsenal has been overtaken by events, the question of who will control what's left now preying on Western minds. And the new leadership is untested. Boris Yeltsin showed courage and political intuition during the August coup, but he's yet to prove his democratic credentials and his will to introduce real reform. In the other republics, even more uncertainty. Georgia's first democratic election produced a president so dictatorial, it's led to near civil war. The last time a Russian regime collapsed, it led to a civil war, later famine, and millions died. Many of the problems that existed when the last Tsar fell have been suppressed, not solved, by seven decades of communism. Rebels in Georgia today told the Republic's president to surrender by Christmas Day, but President Gamsahurdia rejected their demands. He's holding out in the Parliament building in Tbilisi. It's estimated that 80 people have died and more than 250 have been injured in the past three days. From inside Georgia's Parliament, Gamsahurdia's troops make their final stand. firing over the burning rooftops at an opposition determined to overthrow the president. Zviad Gamsahurdia was today taking shelter in a bunker underneath his parliament building. He's been given just 48 hours to surrender. This is a coup, he said. The opposition are criminals. I was popularly elected and I appeal to the West for help. The opposition have used heavy artillery to pummel the parliament for three days. Both sides say they have military superiority. It's impossible to verify their claims. And as the death toll mounts in the streets, there's no sign of compromise, no sign of negotiations. Doctors carrying messages between the two sides as they ferry the dead to hospital. The opposition say they'll sacrifice their lives to see Gamsa Hodia, who they claim is a dictator, ousted. No accurate figures on casualties so far. Estimates say 200 injured and 26 dead. The president does still have his supporters. Crowds gathering in Tbilisi to protect him. And this afternoon his troops have attacked and set ablaze the opposition headquarters. Both sides on the offensive now as this former Soviet Republic begins to stand alone and immediately resorts to the gun. Penny Marshall, ITN, Moscow. Other news now. A young mother and her six children are tonight preparing to face Christmas alone after a hit-and-run driver killed their father. 34-year-old David Button was knocked off his bicycle near his home in Buckinghamshire on Sunday night. David Button was a doting father of six who was working extra night shifts at Tesco's in Slough to buy presents for the children. He was cycling along this road on Sunday night when he was hit by a car. Friends have left flowers where he fell. He was hit from the, from the rear. Um, we gather he was thrown backwards and struck the car. The bicycle was dragged along the road. The driver then stopped 
got out of the car, walked back, looked at my brother lying on the grass first. 